Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jaden Irwin, and today we're going to be going through um, a new starter that I created. So this starter is actually built on Astro. Uh, if you haven't heard of Astro yet, definitely check out their website. Um, if you go to astro.build, a uh, pretty cool domain there, um, you'll see that there is a video on their homepage and that's actually by Fireship. I would highly recommend watching it. It's only 100 seconds, or I guess that's what he says, it's 100 seconds. <laughs> um, it's just kind of a quick overview of what it is and why it's different than other web frameworks out there. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos you'll and followed me on Twitter, you've seen that I like to focus on modern web development and modern web frameworks, including Gatsby, which I'm still a big fan of. Um, it's just kind of getting to the point though where i feel like it can be overkill for a lot of um, basic websites and it's still useful for applications i think web apps but uh, for a lot of reasons i think astro is going to be the way of the future for brochure websites marketing sites landing pages uh, really what the web is largely built on so uh, astro is pretty awesome i would highly recommend looking into it and that's kind of the point of the starter that I created is to make it easy for people to try it out and get a website up and going pretty quickly. So I do like to do these minimal starters. You'll probably see another video on my channel about um, Gatsby and the starter that I made for Gatsby. Um, it's a minimal starter as well. I like to have these starters that basically have zero styling and uh, there's a reason for that. The main reason is that you get to decide what your website looks like. Um, instead of having a cookie cutter type site that people are like, oh, well, it came from that template. Um, if you use these minimal starters, you get to create the design, um, which is some minimal CSS that you can add and just create your own site yourself. So this is the Astro Minimal Starter repo that I created. Um, it is a template repo. so. If you just go and do use this template, you can create your own repo off of it. And um, it's pretty straightforward on the README. I'm just kind of explaining what it has inside of it. One thing that I'm pretty proud of about this is that it has really great SEO by default. So you're going to see open graph tags. You're going to see user declared canonical URLs. Um, really a lot of the basics that you want any blog site or any site to have for SEO. So all of that's built in. Um, and then this particular one is using Markdown for the um, blog posts. So it's a blog, a homepage, that's about it. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and hop in. Um, really what we'll do probably here is just, like I said, say use this template. And I'll probably end up deleting this repo, so don't go looking for it. But this is just for the um, tutorial purposes which we'll probably just use github suggested random repository name um, i'll leave it public and we'll create a repo and that should take just a second perfect and let's go ahead and clone this Um, called animated perfect and to get it going all you have to do is just npm space i for npm install go ahead and add that repo to our vs code perfect and then now we have our repo going so you'll see that this is based on that minimal starter and i'll just go through the structure here real quick so astro is similar to gatsby but not exactly the same um, gatsby actually builds to a public directory and uh, astro by default doesn't they actually build to a dist directory which is pretty common for a lot of frameworks out there um, it's really just preference of what you name those things these are just the defaults and i'm going to stick with the defaults um, you can change that to just kind of a pro tip here if you go to astro config and there's a public option right here and you can actually change what that public directory is called if you want to if you want to be like gatsby you can call it static and you can put all your static files in there 
Um, but in this case, we're going to stick with Astro's default. So then you have components inside the source directory. You have data or data, <laughs> depending on where you're from. And then layouts, pages, and that's about it. Um, really, this NVMRC, that is for Netlify. Um, if you read through their documentation, which probably a good segue, if you go to astro.build, they have a big documentation button up here. If you click on that, then you'll see they have some really great documentation uh, with a full search built in and everything. So read through their docs. If you're confused on something, um, I'm sure that they have it documented. And then another thing is that their Discord is awesome. Um, I'll probably have to put the link in the description of how to join the Discord. Uh, oh, right here. Yeah, so join our community. Um, and then you can join their Discord server. I will say it's one of the best Discord servers for like a dev framework that I've seen. Very active, very friendly. If you have quick questions, they have a support channel in there. That's super easy to just ask a question of, hey, am I missing something dumb? <laughs> uh, and they're pretty friendly about pointing you in the right direction. So check it out on the doc, uh, docs.astro.build for that URL too. Um, yeah, so NVMRC, that's where I got that for Netlify on the docs. And then Netlify Tomil file, I'm going to put that in there. Um, but yeah, the rest is pretty basic. Okay, so we already did npm install on our directory here. So we're going to do npm start. That is going to start run our astro dev command, which if you look in the package.json, you'll see that the start command runs astro dev. Um, and that runs on localhost 3000. So let's go ahead and open that. And this is it. <laughs> when I say minimal, I mean it. So this is the Astro Minimal Starter. You'll see if you go to pages and then index, index.astro. Um, that's another cool thing is Astro actually uses its own file extension. So there's a few reasons for that, that they go over in uh, a lot of detail as to why they did that um, going forward. But I think it's worth it. I know there's a little bit of, um, you know, some people might think, oh, why don't you just call them HTML files? But uh, they're doing some pretty cool things around these .astro files. Um, another thing that you're gonna want to install for this .astro file to not look super plain is if you just go to your VS Code extensions, search for Astro and you'll see their logo um, you'll see that it's got just a couple of reviews and already 4,500 downloads. So it's growing pretty quick. Um, download the Astro extension, though, if you want your Astro files to look normal <laughs> in VS Code. Um, yeah, so Astro, just kind of an overview of how these Astro files work, is you have your front matter inside these fences, which is just the three hyphens. Uh, wrapped around both sides and then you can do imports just like you would expect from something like Gatsby or React and you can import uh, layouts which is cool so that's actually coming base layout is coming from this layouts directory for base layout and then title description permalink those are all props that are being passed into this base layout so you can see that the permalink the description the title and everything is being passed in right there so that is how on our site, this index page has Astro Minimal Starter as the title. And then what I've gone ahead and done is if you go into the data folder and then site.js, I also set this up to have default titles, descriptions, URLs, all of the basic things you, you, would, you would expect for SEO. So title, description, URL, name. Name is gonna be a little bit different than a title, um, specifically for JSON. LD or JSON schema for SEO. The name is normally going to be the, the name of the organization that maybe the website's for or your name. Um, you don't always want that to be exactly the same as the title of a site, but it might be the same. And then you have Facebook URL, Twitter URL, Instagram, pretty straightforward there. Um, yeah, so that is the default for this repo. And then, like I said, this has a blog, right? So if we want to see what the blog looks like, we can go back to our local host and click on this blog link. And there you go. We have a blog post with a 
beautiful unsplash picture and example blog is the name of it with our date and then this is an example blog post that's kind of like the excerpt of the post and if you click on it the whole thing's a link kind of like a card it's just an unstyled card um, then it goes to the blog post and I put some pretty basic styles on this mainly just centering it and having it not look absolutely bad <laughs> um, but you can obviously remove those styles if you want to and start from scratch um, like I said it's a minimal starter not a blank starter so there are some basic styles in here um, yeah so we have our image at the top our big featured image which you can imagine this is also hooked up to open graph images for the blog posts so you're welcome um, and then you have the date and just some lorem ipsum for the blog post and this is actually coming from the blog directory go figure so you have the example blog.md um, title description published date the author of the post um, I don't think that's hooked up to anything right now um, I might be wrong on that but yeah mainly just basing it off of some examples that Astro had too um, then you have the alt text for your hero image so that's what the alt is for and the layout so what's kind of cool about these is you can use different layouts per blog post so if you needed to create some special layouts for a specific blog post or series of blog posts you could do that uh, really easily so that's where the layout's coming from and then you have your markdown um, obviously this is fully editable so we could do an h1 testing h1 back and there you go since it's running live you have testing h1 pops in as an h1 right there um, as you'd expect to block quotes work so quote and it indents that block quote for you and the default styles there. yeah so that is the blog post um, I don't think there's a whole lot else to go through. I can maybe go through the components real quick and how those work. Um, you have this article schema. So this article schema is where the JSON LD schema is being generated from. You shouldn't have to do too much in here because this is really default schema for articles or blog posts. Um, but you'll see that it's passing in the title, permalink, the publish date, the open graph image, and description. And then it's actually pulling the site.url, so that's where that data file site.js comes in. Uh, it's really important for the JSON schema, so make sure you change those defaults. And yeah, that's about it. So title, description, all of that is passed in. And then the base head, this one is where um, the open graph images and things are all being passed in. Feel free to look through those. Um, another cool thing that you'll notice is these Google fonts are already optimized. So if you need to add in your own custom Google fonts, you can really easily do that just by changing the family right here. Make sure it's in a URL format though. Um, or just go to Google fonts, copy the URL and replace this URL right here. Um, yeah, so that is already optimized for Lighthouse too because I'm using uh, a link with a rel preload and then also wrapping it in a no script just in case someone doesn't have JavaScript enabled. So that is it for the base head. And then blog post, this is just a component for the blog post um, itself. And then you have the, that's where the image, the H1 time, all of that is coming in. Blog post preview. This is the preview that you saw, kind of the unstyled card, or mostly unstyled card, of the blog post. So it's wrapping that in a link. And yeah, um, you'll see that there's this astro.props. Feel free to read up on that, but that's really how they declare their props. Similar to React, but not exactly the same. Um, which I actually like. I, th I think this is a little bit simpler way. Um, you have this export interface at the top, so you can tell it what's inside of the Astro props when you're using the component elsewhere. Um, and another really cool thing about Astro is their styles. I really like the way that they're handling styles. So you just do a style tag inside of an Astro component, 
And what's cool about these styles is you can do language equals SCSS. And now you're writing an SCSS style section and it will do all of the conversion to CSS for you. You don't have to set up any node SAS or any um, compilation steps. It just does that with Snowpack under the hood. Um, so it's really cool. Uh, another really cool thing about this is you can also do scoped styles. It's just in, also just built in. So you can just do scoped and it will scope those styles specifically to that component. So those styles don't go mess up anything else on your site. Um, I know I'm moving quick here, but this is really just kind of a overview of this repo, mainly so people aren't completely lost looking at it and they can see me poke around and point out what's inside of here. Um, I think that is about it. If you have any questions, definitely leave a comment below. Uh, I know I meant, went pretty quick here, but um, I think that covers a minimal starter. And um, what I will do is kind of put some extra links in the description for you for some extra resources on Astro. And another thing is I actually posted a new blog post on my website, which is just jadenirwin.com forward slash blog. And it auto filled it for me. But uh, yeah, why Astro is the next big thing for the web. Feel free to check that out. It's mainly just highlighting why it's different than other frameworks. And it seems like Astro is really setting itself up to, to be a pretty big deal for web frameworks and web um, the web community. So yeah, feel free to check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, you're definitely gonna see more Astro content from me. I'm not done with Flutter, I promise. Um, I still use Flutter myself and my own projects. Uh, I just feel like Astro is helping the web community get back to how websites should be made. <laughs> and I try to say that in the lightest way possible. I think there's other ways to do things. Gatsby, React, Next, they're all great. Um, I've just really been enjoying Astro lately. So uh, give it a shot and let me know what you think. Peace.